Hi, thank you for sharing the story of your upbringing. I haven't lived in the places that you've lived, but I know that today we're standing on Arapaho and Ute indigenous land. Right. And that unresolved conflict is a reason why you see so many white faces here today. Yeah. Uh, at the end, you said that people deserve to be able to uh, push towards their own liberation. And I'm wondering if you can give a concrete example of how a group can do that uh, towards emancipation without invoking, as you say, victimization? Thank you for that question. I want to go back to the opening sentence, which is unresolved uh, conflict w about the people on whose land we say. Actually, that conflict has been resolved. Because if it were unresolved, this is the kind of truth that we have to tell one another. If that conflict were unresolved, we would have a line of the Native Americans in front of the people who came here still fighting one another. That is not the case. Conflict is resolved. I want you all to ponder that. It's called history. And it should be taught as such. And the history that is being taught, let's abolish Columbus Day and make it a Native American. It's bullshit. <laughs> I'm so sorry to say this to you, but history is not about emotions. It really is not. And this is why the market for victimhood is, yeah, sure, I'm going to say, I speak for the Native Americans. I'm going to go to the United States government on whatever level, and I'm going to get whatever funds that the United States government is going to pay for, speaking on behalf of the people, and while the Native Americans find themselves in reserves, their children excluded from modernity and from what America has to offer. Um, these funds are going somewhere, and no one is questioning that, because anybody who dares question that is being told, oh, but then you are on a place where history is not resolved. History is resolved. It's called history. It's done. Victimization and emancipation. I think at some point, people find themselves in a situation where they think it is unbearably oppressive, and they want to get themselves out of it. I have found myself in that situation. And you get yourself out of it. You make alliances. You bear, and you understand that you're not the only one. And you get yourself out of it, not by wallowing in it, not by being resentful, not by being vengeful, but by lifting yourself up out of it with the help. And I have said to you, you look at the story of slavery or civil rights in this country, or the Holocaust, or any other, any other narrative of history, it hasn't been only that the people who were oppressed lifted themselves out, but they were also helped by the classes of people who came from the oppressor side. These are the stories that need to be told. And in the end, the story is not Let's go back to the time of the Native Americans. In the end, the story is, how can we make the best of it now? How can we help the children and the great, 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 great grandchildren of the Native Americans of today to make the best of what America has today? Not wallow in it. Thank you.